Chairman, I've got an amendment at the desk. The clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment number 19, printed in Part A of House Report Number 118-261, offered by Mr. Perry of Pennsylvania. Pursuant to House Resolution 838, the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Perry, and a member opposed will each control five minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Pennsylvania. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ineffective, unreliable, and dangerous. That's what we're here to talk about on this amendment. This amendment strikes the $28 million in this bill to the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management's Renewable Energy Program that promotes the administration's reckless goal of creating 30 gigawatts of offshore wind production by 2030. Now, the promotion of rapid expansion of offshore wind is particularly misguided considering offshore wind's high levelized cost, the significant lack of reliability, the impact on flight safety and national defense, and the threat to endangered ocean wildlife from offshore wind activity. Offshore wind is one of the most expensive energy sources available. The Energy Information Administration estimates the levelized cost of energy for offshore wind at $136.51 per megawatt, megawatt hour, which is three times as much as even onshore wind, which is still way more expensive than the traditional forms of energy that are clean and that we rely on to turn these very lights on in this chamber. The heavy reliance on offshore wind is a contributing factor to the United Kingdom having one of the highest electricity prices in the world. In addition to being expensive, wind power is notoriously unreliable. Intermittency is a fact of life for wind power and one that cannot be overcome or ignored. More simply put, if, it stops, if the wind stops blowing, the power goes out. You don't have a backup because we're shutting down all the backups across this country. One of the significant contributors to the European energy crisis in 2021 and 22 is a flatlining of offshore wind production. Investing federal resources in this expensive and unreliable technology is economically ill-advised and unaffordable as we are $33 trillion in debt. Beyond the economic problems with offshore wind, these projects actively threaten national security, maritime safety, and flight safety. The Department of Defense has identified most of the eastern U.S. Atlantic coast as a wind exclusion zone for defense and defense training, including activity and currently leased wind farm areas. The DOD, the people we rely on to keep us safe, has said, no, we don't want this. The Interagency Wind Turbine Radar Interference Mitigation Working Group has raised concerns that these offshore wind farms will create radar interference that will impede air traffic control, homeland security, national defense, and weather forecasting. Despite these concerns and the grave implications of radar interference on the military, the maritime and aviation industries, the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management has recklessly pursued these offshore wind projects without addressing any of these issues. The Bureau's Renewable Energy Program is recklessly greenlighting wind energy projects without accounting for any of the concerns I just raised. Congress must end the funding for this misguided program and protect American tax taxpayers from the funding of this, again, ineffective, unreliable, and dangerous form of energy. I reserve. Gentleman reserves. <laughs> for what purposes does the gentleman from Idaho seek recognition? Mr. Chairman, I rise in opposition to this amendment. The gentleman from Idaho is recognized. As I said, I raise, rise in opposition to this amendment. The Bureau of Ocean Energy Management manages the development of energy and mineral resources of the Outer Continental Shelf along our nation's coastlines. I understand the intent of the gentleman's amendment is to eliminate the Renewable Energy Office in Boehm. I'll first note the base bill already cuts funding for the Renewable Energy Account by nearly $15 million, or almost 35 percent. So about a third of it's gone in our, in our base bill. But I am uh, also concerned that completely eliminating funding runs counter to the all-of-the-above energy approach that is necessary to ensure a mix of affordable and reliable energy sources for our constituents and businesses and to reduce our dependence on foreign countries, some adversaries for our energy. Additionally, I have heard from some of our uh, some in our conference about their support for offshore renewable activities which would not move forward without this BOEM office. Therefore, I must oppose this amendment and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves. The gentleman from Pennsylvania. 
Thank you, Chairman. I yield to someone on the front lines who's dealing with this and their energy bills and with his bosses, his constituents, my good friend from New Jersey, Mr. Van Drew. The gentleman, uh, how much time does the gentleman wish to yield? As, as much as he shall consume. The gentleman from New Jersey is recognized. I want to thank my friend from Pennsylvania for yielding, and I want to thank him for his leadership on this very important issue. Mr. Chairman, it would be hard to find a district that has been more of a petri dish for the experiments of the Office of Renewable Energy at Bohm than mine. I live it every single day. You know, before I go on and talk about this, just from the heart, they, the projects that are coming up, and fortunately one of them, Orsted, some of you may have heard of it, has now left, have received billions of dollars of funding from state and federal government. They themselves admit it would reduce our tourism industry, but they minimized it and said the company itself, it would only reduce it approximately $1.1 billion. It would kill our fishing industry. It would really create very serious situations in our national defense and our national security. It would increase utility rates, again, according to the company itself, so it is probably much worse than I say, two to three to four times as much as we currently pay. It is relying, it is a plan that would rely upon foreign countries to supply our energy. How stupid is that? It has been a painful process, and thank God we won the first step when this huge multinational Danish company decided they couldn't take it anymore. We had a movement in South Jersey at our shore. Our shore counts. We have a beautiful, clean, pristine environment. And it was an organic movement. It was the people. We had rallies. I myself produced 5,000 signs saying stop wind turbines, renew and keep our beautiful shore. This is from the heart. This was a bad plan that would industrialize the areas that they are focused upon and would cost a great deal of money. So do I have more time, Mr. Chairman? Time has expired. Can you yield? Gentlemen, from I Pennsylvania's yield. time has expired. I yield. Thank you. Gentleman from Idaho is recognized. I yield to the gentlelady from uh, Maine. Gentlelady is recognized. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, and thank you uh, to the chair for yielding to me. Look, let's just remember, we are here to protect the welfare of the American public, and we cannot close our eyes to the impacts of climate change, the drought, the flooding, the severe storm, the wildfire uh, events that we are experiencing. Climate change has reached a crisis point, and we have to take bold action to avoid a major irreversible catastrophe. That means we have to invest in renewable energy. My colleagues on the other side of the aisle are proposing this amendment that would focus all of Bohm's researches, uh, resources on conventional energy. Well, if my colleague from New Jersey wants to talk about the tragedy of what could happen to our states, I represent Maine, of course we care about our beautiful coastline, we're worried about offshore oil drilling and the fishermen's impact, the potential impact of tourism of an oil spill, all of the things that we have seen happen in other places. And we want to invest in renewable, in wind energy, to say that it would reduce our tourism industry down to zero is ludicrous. To say that we'd do this to our fishing industry without careful management, that would be ridiculous. I've been to visit the countries of Norway and Denmark. I've talked to the people from Scotland about their offshore wind projects. It hasn't eliminated tourism or reduced their fishing industry. This is misinformation made up uh, because people want to stick to their dependence on oil and gas and the things that we have to eliminate. I oppose this amendment. It has n nothing good about it. We should not reduce the funding from the renewable energy programs and we should continue in the way we are. I yield back. Gentleman from Idaho. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, as I said, I oppose this amendment. It is contrary to what we on this side of the aisle have been preaching for a number of years and that is the all of the above energy. Uh, program. It's going to take nuclear, it's going to take coal, it's going to take oil, it's going to take, uh, yes, wind and solar. It's going to be a part of the mix. That's just the reality. We don't mean that every mile of offshore area ought to be, ought to be available for, for wind towers in the ocean, but there are some places that are. So I would uh, oppose cutting the BOEM 
uh, Renewable Energy Office completely. And I would urge my colleagues to vote against this amendment.